Scorpio, hello, happy slow return. This is your weekly reading for the week of November 10th through to the 17th. Let's dive in. So we have Pluto tiptoeing its way back into Aquarius. Um, by the end of the week, Pluto will be at 29 degrees and 57 minutes. I know I've been saying seconds, but I finally did the research and um, decided to up my game, to expand the possibilities as we will have Black Moon Lilith in your 12th house at 15 degrees by the end of the week. The sun will be at 25 degrees Scorpio and the moon will be at 14 degrees Gemini, just about to cross over Jupiter retrograde. So we will feel a lot of momentum, especially you guys, as that's your eighth house around partnership, sex, death, intima intimacy, um, I almost said research, so maybe it's like you guys have been accumulating a lot of research in this life about what it means to be intimate with people, what it means to have depth or um, that transcendence of transformation in your lives. Let's get started with a few cards from the Salvador Dali deck. And yeah, Mars will have reached three degrees Leo, due for a retrograde starting the 5th of the 8th of December. So, I mean, we have like a couple weeks out. So Mars is moving extra slow before it stations retrograde. So six of wands, this is a really nice card to start your week out with. And seeing that <laughs> we need to go back to the start of the week, um, the sun begins its climb to 25 degrees at 18 degrees and 21 minutes in your sign. The moon will start off in Pisces. So we get this mutable energy going from your fifth house to your eighth house. So the theme of this week, if anything, is like romantic upswings. Maybe it's like your life has only had such a level of depth, intimacy, emotion available to you, and now you're unlocking new levels of uncharted territory. Um, you, you might feel really light at this time. Um, Mars will begin off at one degree. Leo and Black Moon Lilith will start out at 14 degrees and 49 seconds. So in your subconscious game, the back of your mind, yeah, you have to make a decision. Are you ready to expand? Are you ready to go deeper into love, romance, and really to feel celebrated? Um, this figure, this guy is kind of like clutching at his wand because this figure is like reaching out for it. And in a way, it's like, there are different decks that indicate that this person is just celebrating you and maybe you've mistaken someone who's celebrated you as someone who wants to take something that's not theirs. Maybe it's like access to your heart. Looks like you're being called to take a leap of faith on yourself. The devil card is saying that you need to get closer to what it is that you love. And as Mars has moved into your 10th house of legacy, what you'd like to leave behind, it just is giving that you might get this like second wind um, towards romance, towards, you know, because Leo does technically rule the fifth house. We have the moon here. So seeing this mutable energy of fifth house to your eighth house, the feelings that you'll be uncovering are obligation, soul calling. Whoa, big themes to start out this week because the moon will cross over Saturn and Neptune, the north node, where your life is going. It will cross over Chiron. The moon will cross over Chiron. So these watery emotions that you might hold will have a lot of clues for you. And yes, I, I do feel like this is either you learning to take a chance on having more fun in your life, romance. Maybe some of you guys are meeting people as you're celebrating yourself, celebrating your birthday. And they indicate... You know, partnerships, whether romantic, business-oriented, long-term investments also rules the eighth house. So there's a lot to take into account this week, but I think the most is just being willing to present a new version of yourself to the world. If we are not growing and changing every day, we become stagnant. So it is important to, there's a cardinal outside chirping. Um, I love watching birds. There's a reminder to just become more of who you are, less of who you might have been in the past, because in order to expand, we have to be willing to empty our cup and fill it again with something new. So the things that amused you like 10 years ago don't need to amuse you now. All right. So this one fell, the return. A new story you decide alignment 
It's coming together. Yeah. And we also have two more. The Wild Rose and Lineage of the Rose. Do it your way. Embrace your uniqueness and untamed. Moved by the goddess soul call and gather. So this, I feel, is just asking you to gather maybe the parts of yourself that you might have hidden from others or fragmented down because others couldn't accept you. Um, the last time Sun was in Scorpio, like a year ago, who were you then? And I was speaking to this energy. It just feels like we jump timelines, like, you know, as a collective. 2022 was us manifesting events from like 2020. And 2024 is us manifesting events from 2022. So it's like this two year window of like shifting into the things that really do serve us or really don't, and then shifting out of those things. That's just something I've felt and have been picking up on. So the return. Oh, you've waited patiently for this moment. You've likely been working on the inner for some time, and now the outer is beginning to come into alignment. As changing beings, we're in a never-ending growth cycle. This doesn't mean that we're constantly in bloom. No, this means that we're constantly changing. <laughs> this card is like the bloom. However, it's more powerful than that. It heralds the coming and going of a whole new way of being. An entirely new story has been written. This card heralds a great shift in your life. This often takes time, sometimes even lifetimes. Acknowledge how far you've come and how much you've grown. You are a part of creating change, not only in your own life, but in the world. Take a moment to take it in. You're just one of many, but your being here matters. A petal in the rose of a new humanity, part of the forever unfolding. Things are aligning for you and around you. They're conveying and coming together. You're in the right place at the right time. The outer world matches your inner world. This card is delivering a message of harmony, coming together, and the embodiment of holding a clear vision for many years, Scorpio. You've been doing the groundwork and maybe some paperwork to get this to this moment right here, perhaps for months, years, or even lifetimes. You get to decide what happens next. So we're gonna look at Saturday because you know, for the time being, your ruling planet is in the sign of Saturn. Or, sorry, it's in the rulership. Capricorn is the rulership of Saturn. So, on the 16th of November, the sun will be at 24 degrees Scorpio. And we'll have Saturn at 12 degrees. So, this is a big time of learning, a big time of self-study, introspection. The moon will be, have just crossed over Uranus. And holy moly there is a full moon this week so we we have to honor that there was this opposition between mars and pluto so your ancient rulership and your current rulership and maybe this was like a changing of the guard kind of thing to where it's like one person has to leave their post and the other person like has clocked in and the person who's leaving their post you know maybe they need to like use the restroom they need to do some things and like all of these things had to happen to allow for this other person to come in and take form take take charge of whatever um, the orchestration is so in the most like realistic sense of this you have moved from this mars energy and i think that this was like the final dusting off from the age of pisces so the way that you would enjoy yourself create, co-create, feel those ancient watery emotions has now come out of a fight or flight method because we have Chiron in Aries and the North Node in Aries. And I've been tracking the mean node, but the true node is still at five degrees, 36 minutes. Um, and Chiron is at 19 degrees, 50 minutes. So with the North Node being in orb, and I'm going to look now at the mean node. So that's about a six degree orb. I feel like we can accept and change and shift because I think that there are, there are people around you holding you more accountable. They, they've been watching you grow or else they've been growing as a result of your growth. So it's inevitable that you have to embrace your uniqueness. And I sense that this full moon is going to really help with that it's going to help you to embrace your uniqueness because you might see there are people around you now who really see you they really embrace you and they don't hold back 
in ways that maybe a few years ago you were confronted with a lot of rejection, um, a sense of smallness, maybe even like some helplessness and some hopelessness at the way that things manifested from 2020 to 2022. But now it's like you've come into alignment in such a way that there's a new depth to you, a new curiosity. I want to pull one final card. Um, Kim Collins is calling the wild unknown archetypes. So yeah, this leap of faith in this decision has to be based on how you feel. And look, the heart, the way that your heart feels. And we see that there's like this nebula in another one, people out on the, on the water exploring their emotions. And it looks to be like a nest that this heart is nestled in. So what is your home space like? Do you have a garden? How do you hold this this thought, you know, the Six of Wands does indicate air energy. Archangel Raphael rules air, and it's the direction of the east. And in my meditation practice, um, I've been practicing the Sadhguru now for like just under a week, but twice a day, you know, and it feels like maybe he was my guru in a past life because it just feels so natural. Like the ways that I'm willing to just honor the, the practice and just dive in from being ready for it, and then finally acclimating to that level. So that might even be some themes that you're working through this week is the things that you've been ready for are now coming in. They're now joining your life. It's now something that is a natural process in your day-to-day -day life. The heart. The home, the center, and the throne. When light, expansive knowing, gentle clarity. When dark, fraught, tangled, and betrayal. Oh, so this is like a return to your heart from where it left off the last time it was open, Scorpio. So this full moon in, in the sign of your seventh house, crossing over Uranus, is really going to allow for you to see what rubble has been just kind of lying around and repurpose it, put it into use um, to re-invite people into your heart. And then I would say that you can also have a more finely tuned sensor for what is heart aligned and what is not moving forward. Some say there is a cave at the center of the heart. Others say it's a pool with a flowering white lotus. Imagine yourself there and draw what you see. So that's like a creative action you could take this week, maybe for the full moon, to take a leap of faith on your uh, curiosity and creativity. It's possible from an imaginal point of view to sense the heart as a place. Either we are there within the realm of expansion and compassion, or we have drifted somewhere else. There's no in-between. It's common for us to leave this archetypal center without realizing it as the world, with its seductive twists and turns, offers us a frequent departure. We may even become a stranger to the landscape of the heart, leaving it vacant for long stretches of time. The seed of the heart is often reclaimed by nature, music, dance, and the presence of children or animals. So we heard that cardinal earlier. Maybe some of you guys want to look that up as an animal totem. Maybe you, you have that in your own life as an animal totem, and it means something significant to you. Just be on the lookout. This card encourages us to move past the layers of life's tangles and knots and into the wild and sacred center of the self. The most precious throne in the galaxy is awaiting your return. Oh my gosh. Okay, so this is someone who maybe wants a part of your heart. They want you to receive them, like, in a creative way, creative capacity. This could even be your inner child wanting you to open up and to start uh, moving through life in more creative ways that you haven't really tried in a while because your heart was, you know, you maybe weren't looking to your heart. You weren't in your heart when you were making a lot of decisions. And this two swords could represent you deciding about your heart or your head. And we see here there's a bull with a ship, of course. Um, so this could represent the heart and this could represent this full moon in Taurus. So Mars and Leo is saying for your legacy, take a leap of faith, get creative, get curious again, and trust that your uniqueness is a treasure. And I sense that for this full moon, we're going to have a lot of oceanic feelings, so it's a great time to 
sit by the water, to um, focus on water and meditation. There's, there's got to be some way to explore water. I even suggest for people to put a bowl of water with salt added to it out under the full moon and use it to like bathe yourself or charge your crystals, whatever it is for you. And this Page of Cups is very Neptunian, asking us to return to our heart. And I, I do believe that there will be something very special that comes through this heart opening, this heart awareness, this willingness to be in the heart. Venus does move into Capricorn over the course of this week. Let's see when she enters. So in between Monday, ruled by the moon, moon crossing over Saturn into Mars day, with Mars at two degrees Leo. So our feelings will be a lot more vulnerable and a lot more communicative. So on Tuesday, the 12th of November, Moon, at the time I pulled this, Eastern Standard Time, 6.47 a.m., Venus at zero degrees, um, Aries at zero degrees, sorry, Moon in, at zero degrees, Aries. And those two zeros are opening us up, I believe, with Pluto at 29 degrees Capricorn, Venus at zero degrees to a new spectrum of communication. It's like we're learning to communicate with our heart in new ways for the first time in this life. So no matter what your age is, no matter what, how many, um, you know, explorations you've had into intimacy, this might feel like you're starting a new book altogether, not a new chapter, a whole new volume. So Scorpio, if you want to go deeper into this energy, see where Taurus is in your chart. Uranus is in your chart, which house it's in. And then also, what's in your seventh house? If it's Taurus, watch that reading. If it's another um, you know, sign, or if you want to get into the degrees, that's also important. Um, this full moon is happening at 24 degrees Taurus, so I don't have, oh, I do have it. Because it's your birthday, I'm gonna read this. 24 degrees Taurus. A man with no mouth, nothing to say, everything to do. The self cannot be articulated because it's far too busy, pressed out into emergency mobilization 24 hours a day. Yeah, this feels like the energy. No personal life, no personal world, no personal self. Just fantastic availability to the call, the collective vigil, entered upon willingly and selflessly. The demands and rigors of this position and stance are punishing and extreme. You are so hard pressed, so rapidly attentive that nothing else is, exists. The assignment is clear and brutally so. Be on the spot at every level, maintain order, keep everything going and stay tuned to everything unusual and strange. Follow it out, keeping it in your sights and make absolutely sure that you stay sober, integrity sworn and minutely diligent to hold the center and uphold the law with a steadfast, steadfastness that is beyond belief and simply true. Ooh. So maybe there's some angles that you've been living in that don't allow for this level of integrity, or maybe you've been so pressed in this level of integrity that you haven't looked around to see what you've amassed, what you've accumulated in this year of this level of diligence, focus, and you know having the blinders on. But I have a feeling that things will be shifting. You might more comfortably relax into this position. You might find yourself in this trajectory or you might take some time to celebrate yourself and to check in with your heart to make sure everything is up to standard. Have an amazing solar return, happy incarnation anniversary, and until next time, Scorpio, all of my aloha.